part of the athletic survey as well. And I've seen a couple of different stories about it. If the group is Trayvon Diggs, Dak, CD Lamb, Pollard, and Steele, how do you want to handle contract extensions? Like, are there people that you're like, hey, we, because my answer is going to be, you need to get Dak done first. So you can figure out how your money is going to look for years and years and years. But how do y'all feel about this? And then to add on with Pollard, I do not want to give him a contract extension. Yeah, I I 100% agree. You got to do Dak first. And then from there, you move forward. And I think this should be Tony Pollard's pretty much last year as a Dallas Cowboy. Hate saying it, good guy, but that's the way you have to treat that position. Yes. Yeah, draft there, and I mean, Dak did say that uh, Deuce is going to help them immediately, so I'm interested to see what his plan is for that. Let's, if we could stop on that for just one second, does that feel like it would be a different semblance of an offense at all? Because we, the Cowboys in the past, don't seem like they've done super well with optimizing specific players' talents, and so if they use Deuce Vaughn straight away, I've hopeful that that will be a really positive thing yeah and i mean i think that will have a lot to do with mccarthy's approach to what he wants to accomplish sure. you know like that's this is i'm not saying that this offense is going to be completely different this year like it's right. not gonna, i don't right, think right, it's right. going to be honestly if you're looking for revolutionizing offense i don't think that's mccarthy right i think it's i think it's going to be like look we have some things that we want to some practices we want to use and we're going to go about it this way but we got to get we got to balance out what our defense is really good at. And that's what his approach is going to be is protecting the defense more than anything else. So yeah, I think that could be a thing. Kevin. Uh, my, uh, oh no, I don't know what's happening. I think Dak is a good quarterback. Okay. And I understand like we are living in this. We had this discussion the other day. Sure. We are living in this place where it's just economical to extend yeah. Dak and do all these things. Is it the for, is it the best interest of your team? Okay. If you decide, see, and this is the issue that the Cowboys ran into to begin with, right? Is you have to decide right now, like in this moment, do you want Dak to be here two more years or five to seven more years? All right? Because you can bail... But you have to have the financial resolve right now to know in two years you're bailing and you're still going to take a hit. Or even if you make a trade after this year, you're still going to take a hefty hit. And I don't think the Cowboys have the stomach for that. Tony Romo's body was deteriorating before our eyes. It was easy to see. His body couldn't handle it. And they were still going to roll with him until he died. And they got lucky. And they got Dak Prescott in the fourth round, the year that Tony Romo's body died. Like, it was the luckiest thing you could ever have happen for an organization that was not trying to replace a guy that you knew needed to be replaced very soon. His body was failing him. His back was jacked up. And luckily, upon all luck, they had Dak sitting there waiting. And nobody knew, even the Dallas Cowboys, that he could be that good that quick. And then stay good. He's a good quarterback. I think they're going to go with Dak until he's physically incapable of playing the position. He will never, and I mean never, get replaced because they don't think he's a top five or eight quarterback. They're just going to roll with him until his body can't do it anymore. And I go back to the question I asked. Is that what's best for the team? I don't think it is. Okay. And so I and think it's mostly because Dak hasn't gone, like he hasn't gone beyond. His ceiling is his what it is. Yeah. And I don't know if he can break through that ceiling to the next level. I, Mike, I understand what you're saying about Jerry and Steven and their approach to things. And that's why I'm asking that part of the question is it, economically, it's the, it's the situation that's easiest to pursue. And you're right. And here is the part of the conversation. And I'm not trying to say like, because somebody goes, were there real conversations about giving Dak more money? Because it's simple economics, right? Because you know what the Cowboys keep doing on this? We're going into year three of the four-year, $160 million contract for Dak Prescott, right? Because of the way the Cowboys do business, do you know how many of those years have really hit? Zero. 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 You are going into year three of a four-year deal. Zero of those years have hit. Because your cap hits have been 17, 19, and this year it's going to be about $27 million. And if you're wondering, 
Where does the rest of that money go? His cap hit for 2024 is $59 million. And after that, you have another $36 million in dead money once his contract is over. So it is it is similar to putting uh, taking your credit card debt and then putting it on a 0% interest thing and then a just saying, I'll pay percent. that off later. You have to pay it at some point. And it's time to pay, and they still haven't found a new credit card with 0%. Yeah. For people who are like, all you got to do is build a better roster around him. I hear what you're saying. I don't disagree with that. But with what? If it's just draft picks, we've done very well at that. If it's other monetary resources, I do not believe the Cowboys have done well at that. And so that's why you're probably right. I don't think the Cowboys have the stomach for that. And I think they'll sign, they want to sign Dak and then figure out the rest. Yeah. And that's where, that's where I kind of, I think in the way I would probably do it. And I, I am not a capologist. I would hire you as my cap guy. Uh, but the way that I would want to do it is I would probably say, I, I appreciate your service, Diggs. I can't pay you. I have to. I have to pay off this DAC debt first, sure, and then I have to redo my team. That's the way that I would probably approach this. I have no doubt that you just won the heart of Eric Chiafalo at the very least. I don't want to get rid of I him. Know. It's not because I think he's garbage. It's just I got to figure out how to get out from under this bad debt I have with DAC. On the Cowboys fan survey, it plays out like this: fifty percent of people say CD Lamb. And then 20% Trayvon Diggs, 19.5% Dak Prescott. The one I'm a little surprised about is Terrence Steele's only 6% and Tony Pollard's 4%. I do not think people appropriately appreciate what Terrence Steele has become or what he meant to this team last year. I get it. He's coming off an injury too, though. So that could be part of it. They, their, their backup plan for him, I mean, their, your backup right tackle is they don't have a true, you know, they were like, we'll throw Jason Peters out there. Right. We'll throw Tyron Smith out there and it'll just work. And it didn't, like, it, it was okay, but it wasn't, the, you know, what it was with Terrence Steele. I do want to know, is he, is he, is that combo block just super effective or is he even better at right tackle? Like he was growing into the spot. How much better can he get back to? But I understand what you're saying there, man. Like he's from what he started as to what he is now, leaps, leaps and bounds different. Which player's departure do you think is the toughest to replace? Is it Zeke, Schultz, or Connor McGovern? I guess Connor that's, McGovern. That's where I'm going to. Um yeah, because we're not 100% sure how this offensive line is going to look slash guard tackle. Obviously, yep. we know one of them, Zach Martin. But, yeah, so I'll go there because I am I think all three of us weren't, like, the biggest fan of Schultz. I think he's very replaceable. Solid sure, player. Sure. Solid, good player. I think there's a whole bunch of people that could have done what he did in the NFL, and maybe I'm wrong about that. And Zeke's time has passed, you know? I mean, hey. Agreed. He loved partying, and – that's why you pay the you pay the piper at some point, and at 27 years old, his body's done. But McGovern was kind of a fullback a lot of times, right? Like that was, I don't, so like sure. So do you? I, I guess I'm I'm kind of like I guess Schultz, but I think they replaced Schultz. Schultz got the most votes, 43 and a half percent. Zeke only 20 and a half percent, and Connor McGovern 32 percent. Now we've been talking about Dak a lot, so here are the categories. Dak is a what in the NFL? And remember, this was Cowboys fans. He's a quarterback in the NFL. Top five. Okay. Between 6 and 10, between 11 and 15, 16 and 20, or not in the top 20. Which I think is an insane opinion, by the way, if you say he's not in the top It's 20. weird because anywhere from 7 to 11 is kind of with that range. Okay, so you got to pick. Yeah, so I'm in this weird spot. So I'll say 6 to 10. Okay. Mike? Agreed. S okay. That is the leading vote getter. I know you were definitely in on that. 63.5% said Dak was between 6 and 10 in the NFL. 28.7% said between 11 and 15. So hopefully that just kind of shows right there. 92% of Cowboys fans say he's between 6 and 15 in the NFL. Will Dak Prescott be the Cowboys' starting quarterback in three years? Now, we were just talking about this. I say yes. Mike says, says yes. You say? Mm, yeah, sure. 
Okay. Oh, I'm looking at pro football focus. Unless they're catastrophic injury. Yeah. I think I think you can mark him down for the next five years. Pro Maybe five years from now, his body starts deteriorating and he can't do it anymore. Pro football focus has Dak at 10. Okay. And uh, I, behind I Kirk Cousins and Trevor reason. Lawrence and Jalen Hurts and Lamar Jackson, Aaron Rodgers, Herbert. Like that's that group is yeah. is good. I mean, that's that's an effective group right there. Seventy eight percent said yes, he'll still be the starting quarterback in three years or more. Now, this one is really interesting. This might be the last one I got for you guys. If the entire offensive line group is healthy, who should start at left tackle? Smith or Smith? <laughs> And please distinguish which Smith you T. Choose. Smith. I'm going to need a further. T. Y. No, I'm going to need one more at least. Yeah, well, last letter N. This year yeah. alone. All right, I'm thinking about this year specifically. I'm not thinking about the future. Sure. Okay, because if I'm thinking about the future, I want Ty Tyler Smith to go ahead and start there. <coughs> but if Tyron Smith is going to be healthy, I want him at left tackle, and I want Tyler right next to him at left guard. I feel like I have a strong left side if I have that group going. 75% of Cowboys fans said Tyron Smith should be the starter at left tackle. Only 25% said Tyler Smith should be the starting tack a starting left tackle if both are healthy. It's a good question, but I don't think you have to worry about it. It'd be like, hey, who do you want to play at off guard this year, Rolando Blackman or Josh Green? And you're like, one of them's 50 years old and doesn't play anymore. And I feel like for Tyron Smith, like he's going to get hurt and you're not going to have to really worry about it. Are you it. trying to say that Rolando Blackman couldn't go out there and do that thing, though? Like, I, you hear him. That energy's insane. It is, but he this can't next year, play in the NBA. Rolando Blackman or Dwight Powell at $12 million per year. Rolando Blackman gets the veteran minimum. Dwight Powell. Oh my gosh! Is way better than Rolando Blackman right now. And but I don't know if you gave Rolando Blackman 15 minutes in NBA playoff <laughs> games, would he get more than three points and two rebounds? I think he might. Is and by the way, since it is the Cowboys fan poll, it probably won't surprise you which of the Metroplex teams is closest to winning a championship. 45% said Cowboys. 29% stars, 23% Rangers, and only 3% said the Mavericks were the next to win a championship from this Metroplex. And if before anybody asks, none of them was not an answer option given. Last question. What? <laughs> okay. I have no idea what this question is. Now that the Houston Rockets might be engaged or involved with Dwight Powell, how much money will Mark Cuban overpay oh Dwight Powell to make sure he never leaves Dallas? Are you going to party if Dwight Powell is just gone? I think it would help. I think it would help out in a way that you can't play him. I think if he's here, he plays.